Okay, when someone mentions Muscle Beach, you immediately think of Venice. However, that wasn't always the case. The original Muscle Beach location was in Santa Monica, where in the 1930s, this group called the Works Progress Administration, or WPA, installed some exercise equipment just south of the pier. Initially, much of the training that occurred over there were gymnastic routines. When weights were put on a platform down on the beach, Muscle Beach became a golden pilgrimage site for physical cultural legends, guys like Vic Tanny, Jack LaLanne, Joe Gold, as in Gold's Gym, and Steve Reeves. One of the physical cultural greats who answered the call of Muscle Beach was Bill Peanuts West, who we featured in an earlier video. West initially lived at the Muscle House in Santa Monica, and when the city of Santa Monica closed the weight pile, West, along with his lifting partners, moved to a small garage that offered no electricity, but a place to train. After the candles used for light were knocked over during a late night training session and the gym burned to the ground, a new location had to be found. Bill graciously offered the two-car garage behind his Culver City home as the new gym. Like the infamous New York Italian social clubs of yesteryear, Membership in this gym was by invitation only. This was a place where serious lifters gathered without having to worry about distractions or even gym fees because West did not charge anyone. Over time, this gym became known as the Westside Barbell Club. However, for the fortunate group who were able to lift at this iconic training facility, it was referred to simply as Peanuts Garage. The gym existed for just a little over a decade. It closed in 1972 when the house was sold. Yet, in that short time, Peanuts Garage housed some of the strongest lifters. We're talking about the mythic power lifters, guys like George Friend and Pat Casey, both of whom we featured in earlier videos. There was also the American bench press record holder, Bill Thurber, Fren, as an Olympic hammer thrower, brought with him a number of elite throwers. Olympic level guys like Harold Conley and Dallas Long came to train. At the Westside Barbell Club, the thrower's routine was basic and they went heavy, usually lifting twice a week on Tuesday and Saturday. On one workout, they would do regular squats, and then on the other, they would do bench squats. They also did a fair amount of power cleans, and some of the throwers would bench press pretty heavy, even using elbow wraps for overloading. With all of this talent coming through the gym, Wes turned his garage into an active library of revolutionary lifting ideas. Some of those ideas included partial range of motion training, like box squats, accessory lifts, like the incline bench press and straight-legged deadlifts, Weightlifting gear, most famously, the lifters would wrap their torso in a bed sheet as a precursor to powerlifting support suits. Power rack lifting, like rack pulls and lockouts. And the touch system, where a spotter places his hand on the bar to offer a psychological boost to the lifter. One of the things that really made Peanut's garage unique was that there would be some of the most rugged, and accomplished lifters crammed into a tight space and gathered around one piece of equipment. It was not unusual for six or seven guys to share one squat rack, but everyone got in, got their work done, and made some real gains. Now if you know about an iconic gym, a legendary gym in the history of lifting or physical culture, tell us about it in the comments below. In the meantime, if you want to hear some more of, the, more of this history, these stories from the past of physical culture, click subscribe.